may not look like what you expect, but it's actually meant to be a piggy bank. But rather than taking inspiration from a farmhouse, it is inspired by a bank with a vault door. So you just drop your change into this slot at the top and it's going to sort out the change as it rolls down this slide. It's just going to drop into the hole that's the correct size. So when I drop a penny in here, it's going to fall into that second hole. Um, and when the time comes, you just open the vault door on the front and all of the change is separated into these different trays. So you got your dimes, pennies, nickels, and quarters are at the bottom. The whole thing is 3D printed with the exception of a few bearings and a few metal dowels. So it takes a lot of plastic, but it's actually pretty simple assembly. So stay tuned for all the instructions on how to build one of these yourself. I'm going to upload everything onto printables if you want the files. So please uh, let me know how it goes if you try to build one yourself. All right, assembly is easy and I'm going to start by putting the door together. And the first step is to remove the support material on these side bolts. So now that the pieces are all ready to go, I'm going to start by putting together the gears. So I made these in two parts and they should just snap together with the friction fit. You just snap them together like that. Alright, so there are the gears. There's a big hole in the bottom and that's where we're going to put a bearing. So I designed this trying to use the cheapest, most available bearings I could find. So these are uh, 22 millimeter outer diameter, 8 millimeter inner diameter, and 7 millimeter tall bearings. Um, this pack of 20 was only 10 bucks on Amazon, so it's easy to get. I'm going to take a bearing and put it one in each gear here, and it'll snap in. So we have our gears and our bearings, and these gears are gonna snap into these four pegs in this frame, so. Next, I'm gonna take one last bearing, the fifth total, and stick it in this middle recess. So, there we go. And that's it for the bearings. Next, I'm gonna start adding in these bolt pieces. You're gonna take these and make sure that you know, there's a track on the bottom, so you should have the longer track facing down. So I'm going to put it in and extend it all the way out. I'm going to take the bottom one, do the same thing, all the way out. These just fall into the tracks, but again, you need to make sure that you put it in so that they are all the way extended. When the tops are extended, the sides need to be extended. I'll add in the last bolt here, like that. And there we go. So that's the mechanism. At this point, I would definitely recommend testing it like this. And you can see it's very smooth, but if you have any friction, you should inspect your pieces and see if there are any high points or anything that you can file down or sand down to make it smooth. And this peg on the bottom is what goes into that center bearing. There we go. And, and that works perfectly. Should be very smooth. There shouldn't be any resistance. So now it's time to add this cap piece over the top, and it will just fit with a friction fit if you just snap it on, but I did include a few recesses, so on the cap itself, it's going to be hard to see because it's black, but there are little recesses in the corner that you can add some glue to, and then on this frame piece itself, I've added some recesses along the outer perimeter there, you know, on the corners and on the bottom too. So I'm going to put little dabs of JB Weld in those. Hopefully when I add the cap, the JB Weld will fuse everything together and those recesses will prevent anything from oozing out, so. So I've applied all of my glue to all of the little recesses, so now I'm going to just gently align this and smush it all down. 
There we go, it'll all snap together, and like I said, it's it's secure, especially on the corners. Um, this may look symmetrical, but it's actually not. If you hold it on its side and look at the short edge, you'll see one side is square, you can see there, and the other side is tapered. So, it's slanted. And that will allow the door to open and without it binding, and that's super important. So, you need to make sure that the side with the taper, that should be opposite the side with the hinge, so. I'm gonna check one last time, to make sure that I have the tapered edge oriented correctly, which I do. Another way to think about it would be that the square edge should be the edge with the hinge side. So, here we go. I'm just gonna align the holes and snap that in. Okay. So now this door is all done. I just need to let the glue dry, give it a couple hours, and I'll be ready to attach it to the rest of the frame. So while I'm waiting for the door to dry, I'm going to set it aside and I'm going to glue together a few pieces for the box itself. Alright, so here I have the box piece and that took 14 hours to print. And I have the front piece, which I'm calling the jam, so this is what has um, the hinge connection right there. So I'm going to glue these two together, but first I'm going to remove the support material. So I'm just going to take some JB Weld and basically, if it's not obvious, I'm going to glue in this jam piece into the front. So you're going to want to orient it so that all of these holes are going to be the top of the box. The bottom of the box has my name on it. So also, actually, while we're looking at it, you're going to want to go ahead and uh, paint the seam on the bottom so when you print this so it's not visible. So anyway, make sure that the holes are on the top. When you do that, you're gonna to wanna to orient it with the hinge on the left. Just gonna take my jam piece and again, make sure the hinge is on the left and the holes are on the top. Oops. All right, there we go. That's not going anywhere, even without the glue, that's in there very securely. So I'm going to let this dry along with my door and I'll be back to continue in a little bit. It's been a few hours and this jam piece should be set, although it's not totally cured according to the JB Weld label, but I'm going to go ahead and glue on these caps uh, into the bottom of the box. So this one's going to be labeled the quarter cover and that's going to cover the tube in the back where the quarters fall and this one is the nickel cover and it will cover where the nickels and the pennies fall down like that so I'm just gonna use super glue to get those in because it's not really holding any weight and they're pretty tight anyway so it'll be faster and easier All right, so I'm gonna let these sit for another hour or so, let that all dry up, and then I should be ready to add the door to this box. I have the box and the door all assembled and drying, so now I'm going to put together the actual sorting mechanism and let this dry before I put everything together. So this is somewhat simple, it's only three pieces, but you need to be very careful because I didn't leave too much space for glue, so. Um, you have this piece, the coin slot, that's where you're going to drop in the coin right there. And um, this thing actually prints without support material, um, basically with the slot facing down. So I was surprised that actually worked. Um, <clears throat> and it will align with the grooves on this uh, sled piece, I'm calling it a sled. 
Um, so first thing I'm going to do is just glue these together and I'm going to be very careful that no JB Weld oozes out because this is going to be very visible and I want it to look as crisp as possible. The smart way to do this is to glue these two pieces together and let them dry overnight and then glue it to this larger sort of frame, but I'm just going to do it all together at once now because I don't feel like waiting. So this piece, again, prints without support material, just like that, um, with this side on the bottom. This recess down here is really just to try to save material, although I don't think it really saved very much. But anyway, so um, basically uh, this thing's gonna sit in this track. So I'm gonna put a long thread of JB Weld along there. So you wanna just put very small dabs of glue on the top of these two. You can put as much as you want on this face. I recommend doing the whole length. Don't put any on this second to the bottom one because it would has a very high chance of being visible. And then at the bottom here, you can just add one last step, uh, dot. So. very gently, carefully, put this piece in, the pieces fit together well, I mean the whole thing looks awkward um, and like it shouldn't fit together but it does so just gonna leave it like this for a couple hours, let this epoxy set and then it should be good. All right, so this is probably stupid, but I'm going to go ahead and glue the sorter onto the top of the box while the sorter is still drying. So um, the alignment's pretty straightforward. You just align the holes in the box with the holes in the sorter. And there's a lot of surface area on the bottom of this thing for glue. And so um, you don't need much precision. All right, so I've applied a bunch of JB Weld to the bottom of this thing, and I was not very careful, but it doesn't really matter. So I'm gonna just take this, and a good way to do it is to use the back edge of this box as your guide. Make sure the glue is hitting both pieces, and uh, that ought to do it. The sorter itself is still drying, but I'm gonna let everything dry together so I'll be back in a few hours to attach the door and then this thing will basically be done all right it's the end of the day and I've given this plenty of time to dry and I've given the door plenty of time to dry the coin sorter is connected on top securely and I'm ready to attach the door to the box so what I have here is a fully assembled door that works perfectly and I have two 30 by 5 millimeter dowels. So they're 30 millimeters long and 5 millimeters in diameter, and I'll include them in the link below. All right, so I have my assembled vault door and sorter all right here. You can close a door, lock it, unlock it now when you open it we have our different boxes so we have our quarters here that goes on the bottom and we have our nickels that's second to go in then our pennies and dimes so i'm going to take a quarter here Put it in the slot. 
put in another quarter. Now I'm going to take two dimes. They should go on the top box. One, two. Take my two nickels. One nickel, two nickel, and then pennies. There's one penny and there's two pennies. So now when I pull out these slots, we have our two dimes, two pennies, two nickels, and two quarters. So I've tested this thing with a gigantic jar of change and it's literally been perfect. I've not a single coin go in the wrong slot. So I hope that works for you also. And that's it. I hope you enjoy this. If it works, please let me know. Leave a comment. Build one for yourself. Give me photos on printables. I love that. Just anything. If you want to adapt this to fit Euros, that would be pretty awesome too. So yeah, I hope you enjoyed it and thanks for watching.